The Plastic Ono Band can be defined as an era as much as it can be a musical group. With an ever-changing lineup of musicians, the Plastic Ono Band name was used by founding members John Lennon and Yoko Ono to release their collaborative and solo projects. Formed in 1969 at the tipping point of Beatles tension, the band's music is a time capsule of Lennon and Ono's personal experiences, marriage, breakup, reunion, and beyond. Today, we're giving you 10 interesting facts about the Plastic Ono Band. The Plastic Ono Band had a rotating lineup of some of rock's most successful musicians. Eric Clapton, Klaus Vormann, Billy Preston, Jim Keltner, Keith Moon, and Lennon's former bandmates George and Ringo all contributed to the Plastic Ono Band in some form or another. Lineups would vary month to month and change depending on what song was being recorded or which events the band was performing at. Recording sessions were reportedly very relaxed and the musicians, given their obvious credibility, were allowed tons of creative liberty. Klaus Vormann, an old friend of the Beatles who played bass on some tracks for the Plastic Ono Band, explains the environment of these sessions, saying, Everything's done in two takes, no fussing about, so raw and fresh and direct. Nobody ever told me what to play. I always played what I felt would suit the spirit of the song or the lyrics. Klaus was part of the core group of members that played for the Plastic Ono Band, the other main member being Ringo. Ringo speaks about his experience of watching John in a new musical setting, saying, The simplicity of what Klaus and I played with him gave him a great opportunity to actually, for the first time, really use his voice and emotion how he could. There was no battle going on. He would just sit there and sing them, and we would just sort of jam, and then we'd find out how they would sort of go, and we did them. The Plastic Ono Band is probably most famous for Give Peace a Chance, the song Lennon and Ono wrote together while on their honeymoon in Montreal. Give Peace a Chance became an anthem for the anti-Vietnam War movement in the U.S. It was sung by hundreds of thousands of protesters on Vietnam Moratorium Day in 1969 to express the people's desire to end the war. The song was written during Lennon and Ono's Bed In, in which the couple stayed in bed for weeks straight to nonviolently protest the war. When the song was recorded, dozens of journalists and celebrities were present. Some of the most notable people who came to watch and sing along with Lennon and Ono were Timothy Leary, Allen Ginsberg, Dick Gregory, Petulia Clark, and Derek Taylor. Clark recounts the experience of being part of this recording, saying, It was chaos. People were banging on telephone books, on ashtrays, bells, all kinds of crap. The Hare Krishnas were there, laying on the floor. There was Timothy Leary stoned out of his mind. It was like a goddamn circus. When came the time to do this, I said, Man, I don't know what this is going to end up like, but it's going to be really weird. Don't forget, decades later, people see the importance of it, but in the moment itself, it looked like it was going to be a real fuck-up. One of the key elements of the Plastic Ono Band's music was screaming. Lennon and Ono started Primal Scream Therapy in 1970 with its creator, Arthur Yanov. During this type of psychotherapy, patients are called upon to reenact traumatic childhood experiences and express the repressed pain and frustration these experiences cause through uncontrolled screaming. Lenin recounts his time with Janov and undergoing the therapy, saying, I still think that Janov's therapy is great, you know, but I do not want to make it a big Maharishi thing. I just know myself better, that's all. I can handle myself better. The Janov thing, the primal scream and so on, it does affect you because you recognize yourself in there. It was very good for me. I'm still primal and it still works. I no longer have any need for drugs, the Maharishi or the Beatles. I am myself and I know why. Lennon and Ono brought their experiences with Primal Scream Therapy into their music. Songs on Lennon's 1970 album titled John Lennon Plastic Ono Band, such as Remember, I Found Out, Isolation, God, Mother, Working Class Hero, and many more, were all influenced by the therapy. Ono would also become quite known for incorporating the Primal Scream into her performances. Because of this screaming, people weren't always a fan of the Plastic Ono Band's music often categorized as avant-garde, a genre that already has a limited fan base. Lennon's new music was much different from the music he had and was still making with the Beatles. 
The public also wasn't the biggest fan of Yoko Ono, a distaste that only grew after the Beatles broke up amid rumors that she was the reason. Ono also performed screaming hysterics at Plasto Ono band concerts, one time doing so for a full 12 minutes. Klaus Vormann talks about the time Ono premiered this type of performance at a rock and roll festival in Toronto, saying, People were just open mouthed. They are at a rock and roll festival with Chuck Berry, and then suddenly this avant garde thing is presented. I was on stage standing behind Yoko. She's screaming and shouting and croaking like a dying bird. And I felt, this is about the Vietnam War. I really saw tanks next to me and bombs falling and dead people. That was the thing she was expressing, but I thought, my God, John must be mad to do this. I mean, we were lucky people didn't throw tomatoes at us. The band rehearsed for a musical festival on the plane ride to the venue. After Give Peace a Chance was spontaneously recorded, the Plastic Ono Band followed with another last-minute performance in 1969. Lennon and Ono gathered up Klaus Vormann, Eric Clapton, and Alan White to perform at the Toronto Rock Revival Festival just two days before they were scheduled to go on. Lennon asked his bandmate, George Harrison, if he would join the performance, but he turned the offer down. Clapton was quick to agree, but Vorman took a bit more convincing, as he was skeptical about the time crunch. However, Lennon had a simple plan. They would practice on the plane. Vorman explains this experience. John said, Oh, we'll rehearse on the plane. So there we were, sitting in the last row next to the jets and me playing an electric bass with no amplifier. I couldn't hear a thing that I was doing. I was more nervous for John than me. I mean, John, the Beatle, suddenly going up on stage with a band that hadn't rehearsed? It was incredible. The show's recording was released at Live Peace in Toronto in 1969, which would be the first LP credited to the Plastic Ono Band. Different lineups meant different names for the Plastic Ono Band, depending on who was performing or recording. The name of the band would vary slightly. For example, in 1961, the band went by the name Plastic Ono Mothers, and in 1973, Lennon called the group the Plastic UF Ono Band. From 1971 to 1973, Lennon and Ono performed alongside the rock band Elephant's Memory in New York City and were known as Plastic Ono Elephant's Memory Band during live performances. Elephant Memories bassist Gary Von Syok talks about his experience working with John on the band's album sometime in New York City, saying, His methodology about this album was different. The way he thought about the record, in terms of why he recorded it, it was kind of an interesting thing, because he brought a very new approach. He was thinking about every day being a new news story. Every day we went in, there was a new song on a different topic, and we started to record and he couldn't leave the studio until it was almost finished the next morning. He brought up every day a new song as if he was putting out a new scoop on the latest topic in an everyday newspaper. Lennon presented the song Cold Turkey to the Beatles before he recorded it with the Plastic Ono Band. However, bandmate Paul McCartney turned it down. Those in Lennon and Ono circles have presented theories on what the 1969 single is about. Peter Brown, a member of the Beatles' management team, claimed that the song is a reference to Lennon and Ono quitting heroin cold turkey, as they were addicted to the drug for a short period of time. Lennon said the following about the meaning behind the song. Cold Turkey was banned. They thought it was a pro-drug song, but I've always expressed what I've been feeling or thinking at the time. So I was just writing the experience I had of withdrawal from heroin. To some, it was rock and roll version of The Man with the Golden Arm because it showed Frank Sinatra suffering from drug withdrawal. However, Fred Seaman, Lennon's personal assistant, presented a different theory, saying that Lennon told him cold turkey was about a case of food poisoning him and Yoko suffered from eating leftovers from Christmas dinner. Seaman says that Lennon expressed to him his embarrassment about the true meaning of the song and, therefore, claimed it was all about heroin withdrawal. Although credited to John Lennon and released as a solo single, the song Imagine was recorded alongside some members of the Plastic Ono Band. The song was recorded in 1971, the active years of the band, and therefore it was no surprise that the members made their personal contributions. While Lennon was on the piano, Klaus Vormann played bass and Alan White played drums. Lennon's studio album, also titled Imagine, involved other Plastic Ono members, including George Harrison, Jim Keltner, and Jim Gordon. Alan White says the following about being asked by Lennon to record the song Imagine. I took myself down to John's house and the next thing I know I'm in the studio and we're rehearsing the songs. John passed out the lyrics so we could all read along before we recorded. And then there I was. I got into it and did my job like I always did in the studio. 
My main thing was to play what was necessary for the songs. Evidently, John really liked what I was doing. The whole thing was really like being in a family. Once you got accepted into the Beatles family and friends, it's very satisfying. I got to know all the people around the Beatles. Ringo Starr said the Plastic Ona Band was one of the best experiences of his career. Despite all the incredible albums he had worked on as a Beatle, Starr claims that the Plastic Ona Band really stood out to him, specifically when working on the album titled John Lennon Plastic Ono Band. Starr says, It's one of the best experiences of being on a record I've ever had. Just being in the room with John, being honest, the way he was, screaming, shouting, and singing, it was an incredible moment. Starr also claims that the chemistry he had working with Lennon and Vorman is what truly made recording for the band so wonderful. He says, It was incredible. John, Klaus, and I, one of the finest trios I ever heard. We did it like a jam. We knew John had the songs, and we'd kick it in and felt where it should go. We knew Klaus anyway. John and I really knew each other, so we were psychic where the atmosphere was going to go. With the help of Vorman, the Beatles' old friend from their Hamburg days, Lennon and Starr could get back to the basics and go back to their musical roots. The Plastic Ono Band has been active in recent years. In 2009, Ono revived the band with a slight name change, calling it the Yoko Ono Plastic Ono Band. The band released an EP titled Don't Stop Me, which previewed their album Between My Head and the Sky. Sean Lennon, John and Yoko's son, was a core member of the band during its revival. The Yoko Ono Plastic Ono Band had had many famous guests perform with them, including Lady Gaga, Mark Ronson, Bette Midler, Paul Simon, and many more. In 2010, Ono and Sean Lennon even reunited with some original Plastic Ono members, including Klaus Vorman, Eric Clapton, and Jim Keltner. Ono talks about working with her son on the band's album called Take Me to the Land of Hell, saying, Well, I'm very lucky that way. My husband was incredible, and so is my son. When we recorded Take Me to the Land of Hell, I say something like, I have to add this song because I love it. Then Sean would say, Well, Mom, that song is too short. I want you to give me a second verse. I'd say, oh no, the first was good enough. Sean replies, no, 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 no. Second verse, please. And a third verse, please. So added the verses. Sean is a very sensitive guy, and he's always being kind to his mom, and he likes my work, and so that's good. Can you imagine if he didn't? Well, that's all for today, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you next time.